This is the Criterion Creeps podcast. And tonight we're talking about Youth of the Beast from 1963 and Fighting Elegy from 1966, both directed by Saijin Suzuki. It's been a while, RJ, hasn't it? Since we've uh, had a visit from our good, close, personal friend, Suzuki. Uh, well, it's been at least, what, when was Tokyo Drifter? Like three years ago? It feels like it feels like a long time. That feels like f- first 100 spines, potentially. I'm not going to look it up. I know we could, but. Well, it has gonna... been, it, it was February of 2017. So almost mm. uh, four years. Almost. Good timing, though, hey? It's funny how uh, the timing of these things always work out, you know? It's just magic. Yeah, it's been a it's been a little while, and I know people weren't particularly fans of our Tokyo Drifter uh, reviews, but uh, Randy to kill. Yeah, see, I don't even remember what the other one was called. That's how much but, I care. But you you remember the style and vibe of those movies? Oh, I remember there was a definite vibe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh that's what the kids are talking about these days, right? Like vibing and mood and aesthetic. Well. Let's talk about Youth of the Beast from 1963 oh, sure. first. No tagline, sad, and uh, mm. a synopsis from Letterboxd. When a mysterious stranger stranger muscles into two rival Yakuza gangs, Tokyo's underworld explodes with violence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's, That's it. That's accurate. <laughs> yeah. Um, so my... Uh, my big note here to start off Youth of the Beast is Yojimboing. There is a bit of Yojimboing in this one. Which is interesting because RJ in uh, several episodes in our DS9 reviews, there's an episode that involves a character also doing a little bit of Yojimboing. Which one would that be? Quark? Oh yeah. <laughs> a little Yojimboing here and there. So what do I mean by yojimboing, RJ, when I say that? Uh, are you talking about like a samurai who comes into a town and is like good at stuff and is like... Well, what does he do when he gets there? Fuck shit up. He plays two sides off one another. Mm, playing both sides so you're always, you always come out on top. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> That's yojimboing. Is it you? So you are you saying that Mac from Always Sunny got that from yojimbo? Potentially, like you saw you, Jimbo. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay, whatever. I was trying to find you a uh, um, a tagline. There is none, there's a poster, but it's in French. Would you okay. like me to read the French to you? I prefer not. Are you sure? Do you think the listeners would share that sentiment? Yes, absolutely. La jo- jonis de la bête, la vie du un tattoo, la vagabond. De Tokyo. So that sounds pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yep. So anyways, what were you saying? So anyways, uh, Youth of the Beast. So Uh this movie opens up with a... It's it's like a a murder and a suicide? Uh, A double suicide is how they describe it. A double suicide. Okay. okay. So uh, it's black and white with a burst of color. Like Steven Spielberg. I was going to say that they went the Schindler's List approach. Do you think mm-hmm. that they got it from Schindler's List? Uh, doubtful, RJ. Okay. Yeah. Well, you got to ask. You got to ask. You don't, but. Oh, yeah. Uh, so use the beast. Um, we have a man, Joe Shishido. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's uh, playing Joe Mizuno. <laughs> Uh, which to be honest i think that that's pretty good so pretty real good yeah, <laughs> yeah. i it, it fits for what i like but okay. whatever so uh this he's a cop he's a different kind of cop and he's going to go undercover he's he he's going to be a thug and he's going to infiltrate so well, how do you infiltrate a a, a mafia a, a, a yakuza rj uh as, as demonstrated by this film you just beat a lot of people up you you kick a lot of heads in 
you beat some yeah. dudes till you get their attention and then they go whoa 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 what are you doing beating up our dudes and it's like oh you go to the pachinko lounge and now you're you're, you're beating guys there too just kicking their heads in taking mm-hmm. their pachinkos and their their cash their their yens and you're mm-hmm. spending it like it's your own and then uh, you, you go right to their club where you think the boss is and uh you call the the girls over they all hang off of you laugh at all your things you treat them like shit yeah yeah put ice down their back just because you're a dickhead uh yeah i mean but that's that is a schoolboy mentality right you guys mm-hmm. do a lot of guys do that kind of stuff it's a little weirder when you're not a school boy anymore RJ. you don't know this guy's age he could be 15 <laughs> he's a hard 18 <laughs> he's a hard something oh yeah well, he's a hard man he's a hard man yeah, yeah my uh my first note was so this dude just beats people up no. question mark yeah when not getting his cheekbones artificially enlarged <laughs> so wait what is the deal with that like so his huge chipmunk cheeks like mm-hmm. do you think that was a good decision um i mean it makes him we're talking about it you're talking about it i know. mean when when you look up cheek augmentation he's the first picture really yeah interesting do you think that dude did it in real life yeah yeah but why i mean because he wanted to like like ha cheekbones that's what people want who do you think like the like american like old celebrity version of big cheekbones would be like that they're modeling cheekbones off of i don't know like uh abe vagoda (laughs) potentially he's all chin yeah I just throw. I'm just throwing out like a potential example. Okay, well, that's a bad one. It's a bad one. Oh. So okay. he shows up, and they're going to like teach him a lesson, but he gets the drop on them because he's just that damn good. He gets their gun. It's like I want to talk to the boss, or it's like I'm going to blow you all away. It's like, well, I'll pay him more because they think he's a hitman. And he's like, I work alone. And he's like, I want a salary. It's like, okay, we'll give you pay a what's it like a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand a year. And then, but I want twenty thousand a month. And they're like, okay, sounds sounds like a plan. And this sort of attitude, oh man, the ladies love it. The ladies give those little eyes, like, ooh, I like this dangerous man who takes what he wants. Mm. So he gets taken off to meet the boss. He's got his name out front of his uh, house, mm-hmm. and they're all they're all sitting around plotting around a table. Um, one, one of the henchmen has a big fluffy cat. Yes, he does. And, uh, he's very affectionate with this cat. Even when he's like buffing his knife on the cat's fur. I saw that and I was like, that's questionable, but, uh, he is very, like he, he, he's very friendly to the cat. Some would say maybe too friendly, but, uh, Mm -hmm. that comes later. Yeah. So he signs up with these guys and he's up to he's going to get up to no good and you're like what's up with this what's this movie about what's with that th- that those dead people at the beginning that killed themselves mm-hmm. what's up with this and um we get introduced to the rest of the like rogues gallery of toughs so yeah there's a riddler there's a killer croc there's a yep there's an electro i think in there as mm-hmm. well and uh there's a few there's a few yeah. others there's a there's a gay man Oh, that's a uh, that's that's one for the rogues gallery for sure mm-hmm. and uh yeah. of course that gets brought up and there's some beatings again there's always people getting beat up and people running away um there's women being humiliated slapped around <laughs> uh grabbed at violated that's just like kind of a undercurrent here um but yeah then uh joe he winds up going to the other guy with a, mm-hmm. a shotgun and he, he shakes him down too and he joins them mm-hmm. but, but by not killing them and they're like okay we'll take that deal this is the place where the movies always are playing yeah that's all that's all i can really describe it as because mm-hmm. there's like no characters in this there's no like oh i i remember this person very vividly <laughs> like there's nothing like that there's no, no one to me no one jumps out as sure. uh memorable except Other- cheekbone man she, well, yeah, other than the protagonist, I guess. And even it's like vague. You're like, is this guy a good guy? Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. I don't know. So he joins him, but then there's like the dumb guy. Cause it's like, 
And then I started thinking about like, this is like the departed too, where there's like the dumb guy who like totally believes that he's a good guy until he doesn't think he's a good guy. And he happens to be the right place, but because he's kind of dumb, he doesn't pick up on, Oh man, it's a good thing. I was here to save you from these dudes. <laughs> You're like, indeed, that's very convenient <laughs> for the plot that you don't think otherwise. Mm-hmm. And Are yeah. You, no. So yeah. Th- then it just kind of plays out. Yojimbo style the rest of the story where he plays both sides against the other and you get people's explanations of how they got there or how you know they didn't set out to be this way and they're trying to get out of things guys are trying to sleep with other guys wives and girlfriends and then like I want you to kill the other wife so because I want to be the top girl and if you don't tell me I'm going to say that you raped me yeah that old game hey yeah, that old chestnut. Mm-hmm. So John Woo was going to remake this movie at one point, RJ. Uh, that would have been cool. In 2012, he said he was going to remake yeah. it. It was one called Day of the Beast. <laughs> I mean, but, I, I actually, I, I think that's actually kind of a better title than Youth of the Beast. Youth of the Beast. That, you know, it's a rough in, translation. Unless you agree that this guy's possibly 15 years old. Which she's, not, which she's not well you know or yeah. her yeah or any of them for that matter mm-hmm. i like day of the beast better sure what were you talking about yeah so i mean this kind of fits into that nebula of these criterion genre movies kind of like the killers yeah where it's just kind of like oh that's okay is this even like uh, the best example of its genre no mm, i don't know yeah so this is a yeah, nikatsu uh production there's a whole bunch more nikatsu stuff in the eclipse series that they've done mm-hmm. um i don't know i don't got that much to say about youth of the beast okay i can talk about it for a while sure go for yeah. it yeah so you that that's your final thought is you don't have lots to say about this no it, yeah it, it just it felt like kind of just um very 60s japanese sort of like low budget crime stuff and i've mm-hmm. seen I, I have a bunch of this stuff i own like these the arrow blu-rays and sure. i i have even and i've totally if i you know my my basement didn't flood i i would have maybe maybe even watched uh the one was it detective bureau go to hell one two three whatever the it's crazy title is yeah that doesn't sound complicated at all no not at all not at all yeah. um detective bureau two three go to hell bastards that's the movie that he came, he made just before this one. Okay. I yeah. mean, that, that's a, uh, it is kind of a cool title. It's complicated, but it's cool. Complicated. Complicated. Uh, <laughs> what were we talking about? Um, you were, you were going to talk about <laughs> Youth of the Beast. Right. I was going to talk about Youth of the Beast. Uh, this movie is wacky, man. This is one of the wackiest things I've ever seen. Uh, wow, really? Wackiest? Not things ever. Ever seen. Ever. This is one of the wackiest things I've seen recently. Okay. I think this thing is like proto anime type uh, stuff where it's like, I find a lot of uh, animes that I've seen and I- I'll admit, I haven't seen a whole lot. Mm-hmm. But the the wackiness nature of that stuff where it's like, you go from like dudes beating each other up to like, this, so many he's like getting beat up. And then, then it goes to like zany antics, and then it goes to like other like to melodrama for a while. This movie's like fifty greasers in melodrama, dudes getting beat up like rough, and then it's also like old like a ton of like switcheroos. It's like we got gotcha. you, mm-hmm. and then it's like but we double got gotcha. you, yeah. and then we triple got gotcha. you, yeah. and like it's just going over and over again. I was like, this is some zany ass shit right here, Jared. That's the best way I could describe this. Zany ass shit. Zany ass shit. Where it's like every scene that's set up, it's like, I'm here to intimidate the boss. It's like, we knew you were here to intimidate the boss. We're here to intimidate you. And it's like, I knew you'd know that I was here to intimidate oh. the boss and you'd know that I was here to intimidate you. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, but I was also aware of that. And now I'm double intimidating you. And it's like scenes where it's like the guy who has like, he comes in to fight them. And then there's a the guy in the window with the gun. And then the rifle co- like stock or barrel comes up from under the window to the guy there's all these like double triple uh, like things in this and that's what i mean it's like 
I feel like this is like anime. When I was watching it, I was like, this, this is like every anime I've ever watched. Just like, Neo, it's like, like, just like Neon Genesis. Just like Neon Genesis, man. And Akira. Uh, just like Akira. Just like uh, Grave of the Fireflies. It's almost like that, too. Identical. Identical. No, I'm talking good, about. Good call. You convinced me. <laughs> I'm talking about the zany ones, man zany yeah. but it is also i i do feel like it is also like melodrama a little bit uh like with some of the relationships that are going on in uh, mm-hmm. this one no um and like even just the main character like you said like yo jimbo kind of stuff it's like these, it's all in this like wheelhouse here where it's like i i've seen uh i've seen elements of this kind of scattered throughout other like tv shows books i don't know manga movies that kind of stuff. But does it work? Uh, so here's my here's my take on this. I actually don't mind you through the beast uh, because it's it's very wacky. Uh, I actually I think this thing is more of a criterion movie than a lot of the other ones we've watched recently, just because it is like it's like I don't. I don't know how else to describe it than zany, wacky and goofy. <laughs> uh but like so in comparison like tokyo drifter and uh whatever that other one was i wasn't branded huge, to kill branded to kill i wasn't huge into those where i was like I was they're, like, very, I they're very similar they're but, very but, similar I, but i'd say this is less stylized yeah where those ones are more stylized more deep aesthetic you know the deep aesthetic state uh so i don't know like i wouldn't say those those ones before i didn't like too much and this one too like i'm not gonna i'm not a hard champion of this movie i'm not like you gotta watch this or anything like that but i was like i can kind of see why uh why this movie is in here um i also think this one uh this really reminded me of a uh, nicholas winding refin for some reason like i feel like this would just be his favorite movie this movie and like branded to kill tokyo drift uh drifter i i feel like these are his favorite movies Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know if you'd agree with that or like, so like I was just like looking up my, the movies I've seen, uh, Japanese movies I've logged, I guess on Letterboxd in the yeah. last like eight years. And there's like 46, 47, I guess. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like Sajin Suzuki's is like not one of my favorite guys. Like most of his yeah. movies are about three out of five for me. Mm-hmm. And I, I do, I did like, uh, his take aim at the police fan. Maybe it's because it's got such a great title, but this is very much of this era. Like there was a, it's some of these movies have, I think much better titles than mm-hmm. uh, youth of the beast. Cause it's like, what does that mean compared to say a cult is my passport? Uh, a cult is my passport. That's kind of yeah. cool. I like yeah. that. And then there, yeah, from that same bo- Nikatsu uh, noir box that there's intimidation and the warped ones, which I think are just as good and or arguably better it looks like because i gave him some three and a halfs their way it's not bad not bad not bad and then like kind of in the 70s you really hit their their stride with kind of like that uh more not not necessarily pinku but z- z- even far zanier than this movie uh, even zanier is oh, that possible jared yeah well you're giving your like your stray cat rock movies the uh movie like sex and fury mm-hmm. or uh let's take a gander here what would be something i'd throw out there that i'm like people should just check this out instead but i mean if i if i got it's like watch the female prisoner scorpion movies oh by, by are those Jove. zany they are they're they're pretty awesome okay yeah yeah this this to me feels very like okay yeah. uh, well, you, you've if seen more of this stuff than i have i get too. yeah and i mean yeah. some people like so one of the uh cringiest things i saw looking up for stuff about this movie was the essay that accompanies this movie on dvd uh by one howard hampton and it uh, is he sounds like a weeb and it is so 2005 in it, the way it's mm. written um, it's kind of like how Warren Ellis and Matt Fraction would write back oh. in like 2001. <laughs> and people were saying. still writing in this internet way of talking about like Japanese things. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. Was not, was pretty like, <laughs> there's like, cause there's no information. Cause especially compared to the fighting elegy essay that actually has information. This was just okay. all like this actually, the essay was all style and the substance how do you think that guy would have written a review of uh drive 
Uh, exactly the same. Exactly the same. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Here's the headline of uh, the t- the title of his screaming target. Um, let me just read this first paragraph. Okay. So so sn- okay. Just shot up and watch. So snarls a frenzied gangster pip to babyface tough Joe Shishido as the creep whips a prostate prostrate prostitute. There's plenty for the naked eye to absorb. The delicate calligraphic detail of the bloody lash marks set off by her tasteful black cocktail dress and the no. even redder carpet where she sprawled like a Jackie O rag doll. The no. psycho's horn rimmed glasses are a nice conservative touch. He fumes like an accountant gone mad. Outside the mansion sliding glass doors, a freakish forbidden planet sandstorm is raging an ill wind blowing straight from the id. If this were a goy, oh. if this were a Goya etching, it could be oh. t- the sleep of reason breeds mobsters. Now the historical woman tries to flee into the orange yellow desert, but whip boy leaps the railing and catches her resuming his attack as the camera captures the whole sequence in one virtually static <laughs> shot from inside the yawning house in its sang Freud stoicism. This eloquently <sighs> doorway to hell view suggests Ozu. If an action imp spiked his green tea with acid, the, the assailant falls on her. Then a jagged cut to him as he fervently kisses his half nude victim her limp fingers tracing unconscious lines in the dunes and then uh the next sentence of the next paragraph uh he refers to an axiomatic world coming into sudden focus it's a visceral universe of brutal non sequiturs and coolly theatrical artifice given genre materials a casual he man ray makeover one whose limpid irrationality seems to look back towards silent cinema, even as it basks in the wild crypto pop stylization. Enough. <laughs> Enough of this person. Where did this person work? Nowhere. There's there's no like little bio or anything. Usually they have like a so-and-so writes for something yeah. or they teach somewhere. This this is Howie, <laughs> Howie Hampton. Look him up, folks. Let us know. It's like they found his review on like Rotten Tomatoes 2002 and they're like, this is good. We can That's, throw this in here. Yeah, this it, it, to me is like very, uh, look, at, look at me go. I'm writing an essay for the goddamn Criterion Collection and it's a Japanese Yakuza movie. Could you... I mean, that's horrible up front, but could you imagine if they asked you and me to write an essay for a, a Criterion film? For Salo, perhaps? A, con- a, a conversation between a, creeps. If they just wrote the like transcript uh, one of our episodes and packaged that as the uh, the essay. What movie would we talk about? If we could pick, which one would we pick? That's, if it, we it, could it, pick. It can't, it can't, we can't have already talked about it and it can't have already be in the collection. It has to come out now. Hmm, this is a good one. I'm interested to see what other people think. That's I'd a good say idea. Tremors. Tremors is my uh, guess. Un- unfortunately, Arrow has already put it out just this week ago, buddy. <sighs> well, Arrow's not part of the uh, the criterion proper, remember? No. So, oh, yeah. yeah. Fighting Elegy. Yeah. 1966. No tagline either, but we have a synopsis. Hiroko boards with a Roman Catholic family and falls for the daughter Michiko. He ignores his feelings, joins a gang, gets in fights, and eventually becomes involved with the radical, the radical Kita Ichi Iki group. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. definitely what those words were. <laughs> I'm Kita, not going to pronounce them. Kita Iki. Yeah. Kita Iki. Yeah. Uh, what's that fish that from Hawaii where it's like? Kua Kua Mua Pukana. Do you remember that one? I do not. Yeah, well, it's uh, from uh, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. I know you're a uh, you're a big um, big guy for that film. Anyway, what were we talking about? Yep. So, Youth of the Beast was a contemporary movie for its of its time, and Fighting Elegy is a period piece set in 1930s Japan. RJ. Uh, is it though? It is. It is before World War II. Did they mention that specifically in this? They film? did not, RJ. Well, then I, I. How was I supposed to know? Exactly, and this is a, a fair point, I think, because yeah. I don't know if this movie uh, gives a lot of context in it within itself of what you're yeah. watching if you don't 
look up some of this information. I mean, I don't know if it needs the context, but it's like if they want people to know that, they should probably say that, right? Well, I guess this is uh, a movie that was made um, probably on a fairly low budget and uh, for Japanese market. Probably not. I don't know if hmm. uh, Suzuki necessarily imagined this movie would be seen widely or maybe uh, the history of like kind of the rise of Japanese imperial nationalism uh, was would have been maybe well, more well known to uh, international audiences in 1966, whereas now it's kind of like uh, you have to you have to be a buff, a history buff. So you're saying that, or maybe uh, maybe even have like a starting point of seeing Mishima, knowing Mishima, mm. who's kind of like later than this, obviously. Okay. But there's there's sort of a that's the this is the beginning of what gives way to Mishima RJ you know about that Mishima I do I do so this is connected to that yeah so the the Kita Iki chap that shows up in this movie and talks yeah. to our uh, our protagonist um he, that's that's the guy who was ex- that's Mishima no Mr. Mishima himself no oh okay he comes later I see what you're saying yeah wouldn't it have been better if that guy in Mishima's name was just Mishima? Just like Mr. Mishima? No. And then the guy in this name was Mr. Elegy? Mr. Elegy? You mean like people should just be named the title of the movie? Like Joker? <laughs> yeah, Joker, Mr. Beast, Mr. Fight Kag- Mr. Fight Club. Uh- <laughs> you, you're, you, you sound like my parents renting videotapes at Blockbuster. We watched that uh, Mr. Kagamusha, and uh, he was not a nice guy. We watched uh, uh, that movie with that dr- guy, Jurassic Park. Oh, yeah, I know the guy, Jurassic Park. Yeah. So... Okay. My first note on fighting LG is it's no love exposure. Uh, well, yes. Uh, I mean, it is no love exposure, but I have a different opinion of that movie than I think most people. Maybe. But, yeah. Well, um, I don't know. And my next note here, RJ was RJ, you know about Japanese nationalism? You know about that Mishima? Oh, I know all about nationalism, isolationalism even. Wow. It was a uh, mm-hmm. well, it was a self isolationalism, is what they imposed for a while. You know about that? Mm-hmm. You ever heard of that? No. Yep. Yeah, that's uh, it's part of the game, man. So, part of the uh, game. so what is this movie? Uh, it is a film adaptation of a novel, the first half of a novel, mm-hmm. which I think for me explains this weird car crashness, sudden car crashness of the ending, mm-hmm. where you kind of feel like that doesn't feel like the whole story. I don't know. That maybe that's just me. Uh, no, I'm kind of with you. There, there is, there's a, a bit of a gap here. You're kind of like, hmm? it's just like, yeah, that's it. And he's now he's joining the army, and you're like, wait, but what's the end of it? And but apparently that there was uh, Suzuki wanted to write the second half. Like he wanted to make a second movie that would tell the second half of the novel, which is where uh, Kiroku, of course, joins the army and dies in battle in China. I mean, story of my life. If I had a nickel for every time that's happened, you know what I mean? Uh, so the, the screenwriter of this is also the same chap who brought us Onibaba. Oh, I like Onibaba more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I would say. you know. Um, so just like a couple of weeks ago, I was playing some River City Ransom. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, 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 and that... <laughs> That movie came to mind, or that game came to mind watching this movie a lot because <laughs> there is so many, mm-hmm. be- there's just so many people getting just beat up, up, beaten up, and you're like not exactly sure why each faction is beating up this poor fucking guy. Yeah, it's like he just can't do anything right. He can't make anybody happy. Um, sometimes like, it feels oh. like he's a host of a Criterion podcast. <laughs> exactly on YouTube. Well, I mean somewhere sorry i cut you off you were saying something no uh they're just uh this guy he's just getting beat on left and right he's Um, getting beat off by dudes all over town it's horrible horrible and and he's beaten off dudes all over town and and beating off he's he's literally masturbating in this movie uh well well he he is but he also tries not to 
he he tries to, he's trying to be a good Catholic boy, RJ. Well, he's trying to be something. Because this is uh this is part of that that oddity of like Catholicism in sure. Japanese movies. That's yeah. always kind of like, what's up with that? Well, they had why, a read why, on the why situation. Why does why does why does Neon Genesis have Adam and Eve and giant crosses and I don't know. Maybe uh, Catholicism is the oldest story ever told. You ever think about that? It's not mm. Jurassic Park, even but if it, people tell you it is. Okay. Uh, yeah. So again, in between these two movies, uh, the, the thing that comes to my mind is guys getting kicked in the face. You guys just foot just getting kicked over and over They're, again. That looks yep. like it, that's not good. It's not good. It's not good. Getting, it's not good getting kicked in the head. You don't like getting cooked, you might, kicked in the head? No, not even once. I've got these, kicked in the head before. And these guys are just getting fucking soccer kicked. I got kicked in the head with a cleat once. That sucked. What, what, what did you do to deserve it? Anything like this guy was doing? I think I said that uh, I thought a movie was like a, an anime and some dude just kicked me right in the head. Well, you had it coming. Well, I mean... Well, I mean, Mm -hmm. yeah, there's a lot of full on headers in this one. There's a lot of fighting. And one thing I actually do like about this movie is uh, the exhaustion of fighting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on full display in this one. Fighting takes it out of you. Yeah, there's like some almost uh, old boy like staging of like these like Mm -hmm. mobs of dudes just descending. And eventually they're like, we got to get the fuck out of here. They jump through window (laughs) panes. Mm-hmm. At first, uh, escape in one building, and they make it out to their to the car, and somehow get into, open the door, get into the car, close the door before this mob that's like right beside them, just encloses them. One guy yeah. gets get stuck in the window because slapstick, hijinks, yeah. hijinks ensue. Is it zany? There, there, there is there, there's some zany hijinks I think that are in both these films, even though this is definitely the more serious, somber movie. Yeah, to a point. Yeah. But there is some zaniness. It's like the Animaniacs. Have you ever seen that? I I have as a as a lad. Do you think this is anything? Do, do I think this is anything like Animaniacs? Yeah. It didn't occur to me, but I did think I, I did think about River City Ransom. Uh yeah. I mean, so if Youth of the Beast is proto anime, River uh, Fighting Elegy is proto beat 'em up like games. Exactly. I'm going to keep saying proto until uh, someone gets mad at me on the internet, mm-hmm. which will be tomorrow morning. Maybe. Potentially. So, yeah, uh, this is the story of um, Kiroku, and he's just trying to make his way in life like we all are. Is it a sad bastard story? Uh, uh, well, I think you're the authority on that. You'd have to tell me. It didn't occur to me. He didn't seem particularly sad. He seemed like mix- he seemed more mixed up. I mean, I think he's he's more like just frustrated, right? Where he's just like, well, he's just like, everyone's an idiot. He's really, he's like a uh, Salinger character. He's like mm-hmm. Catcher in the Rye. He's like, you're all idiots. You're, you're all phonies. You're all phonies, you idiots. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, in one, one of those potential solutions to like these frustrations that he's feeling, um, he feels like people aren't like, they're not good enough for him. And they're not like living up to the expectation that he has for himself. Uh, and yeah. so he's there's like that string of uh, disappointment, I guess. And then he he's trying to find like some sort of group to fall into, be it um, be it church, I guess, or like this like the family of this church, and uh, with the the landlady's daughter. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the he keeps yeah. coming back to her and her piano. Yeah. And then he's she, so he's like, be right back. And then he goes out and fights some dudes. But is that just a metaphor? Is that a metaphor? Beaten dudes? I don't know. You tell me. No. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's going to military school. That's uh, not going great. He joins a, a gang. Yep. Who hasn't been there? Mm-hmm. And then he like, what does he do? He basically joins. The, the I don't know. It's I'm trying to 
pinpoint what he joins and what he doesn't join because it seems like he's going like these groups all kind of blend together and yeah i feel like the movie doesn't explain very well what this school is because like is this military school is he like a military academy but it's like it's a school with a military bent yeah well it's like like they keep calling it middle school and then yeah it's like i think it's just i think it's like you said i think it's just a school but it has a military uh yeah. flavor is and the then, word i'm gonna use right and then there's like what is it the osms gang which is like about breaking rules of the school oh yeah and they're like we're rebelling he's like my t-shirt has a picture on it mm-hmm. yeah but, and, but but you're also supposed to abstain you are to be uh well you're supposed to be celibate mm. so as opposed is to, that voluntary it is a vol cell oh well i mean but is it their choice or is it imposed on them it's their choice because they're they're joining the group, so you have to become oh, you have to volunteer to be part of it. Yeah. What about our main our main duck here? Is he voluntary? Yes. Spelled? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, exactly what it is. RJ, I, mean, I respectfully disagree, but uh, you know, to each their own. I'd like to see what it. I'd like to get some uh, YouTube comments on uh, the definition of an incel and uh, just see what people think. I'm not even going to bring it up. People don't like when I bring that up. No. Not you specifically, but other people. Other people. No. You know what I mean? So uh, a lot of this movie is gang warfare, silliness. Yep. <laughs> There's a little bit of experimentation with form of film with like blacked out frames, kind of Godard-ish. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit of flares like that. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, he finds out that uh, Michiko, his his like the woman, the woman he loves, she's she's just gonna go off and uh, she's gonna be a nun. Well, hasn't that happened to you before? No, no. You never wanted to become a nun. No, nor have I want been near anyone that wanted to become a nun. I thought about it three times today. I bet. Yeah, I was like, maybe I'll just leave it all. Be a nun. Who would know? You, you know, you, you Catholics. <laughs> hey, you know what the bigger thing is? It's about trying to improve everything. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, I think mostly what it is, is being the nun is just saying it's the big uh, fuck it to everything. It's like, fuck all these people, all these possessions, these criterion films. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go live in a hut. Go live in a hut and uh, train my body. I'm gonna sit. I'm gonna uh, sit on no chair. And just yeah. Why? You know? Why? Why do I get a chair? Other people have no chair. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna not wear shoes. I'm gonna. I'm gonna yeah. live a austere Spartan life. I'm gonna train myself, better myself, be better, lead by example. Society will come around, coalesce around me, and celebrate me. But think- I'm indifferent. But I'm indifferent to that. I think I'm understanding your uh, your main concern here. Uh, is it the no shoes thing? I know you're not a big foot oh. person. Is that is that the issue you have? Uh, RJ. It's very upsetting. Well, I'm going to wear flip-flops next time I see you. No. Yeah, yep. so yeah, the the movie ends with um uh Karaku heading out to mm-hmm join a coup uh what kind um well you know capitol uh, hill kind or uh, well we don't see how it works out for him uh i know i know in uh in the history books this uh ikikita chap he uh the coup that the attempt fails yeah and he's executed oh cool no i mean I would have done the same. I'm not in, inciting violence of any kind, you know. Everyone be yeah. happy with each other, but you know. So this this movie is kind of about the um, a, 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 a certain form of fascism. Which kind? Youth, youth. Oh, okay. So, some ways this should be youth of the beast, perhaps. I mean, that would it makes more sense for this one. Maybe to be because honest. that that is the name of the novel of of this. So. Oh. 
So what, Suzuki was just fucking around or what? He's, he's just fucking with you, man. Damn. All right. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, of the two movies, I would say this is the better of the two. More, more interesting as a mm-hmm. as a drama or whatever. But, sure. uh, yeah, I don't know. It, uh, again, the, the Suzuki stuff, they leave me wanting. Yep. I um, I mostly agree with you. Uh, the Suzuki stuff. I'm not like super on board. I did like you said the like these two. I actually think I'm better with than the first two. And I think it's kind of like what you noticed where that first hundred. I was really down on movies sometimes, but uh, I think it's just now I'm so weathered by the Criterion Creep. Two hundred and seventy movies later. Yeah, where it's like. It's like, whatever. But uh, these ones, I definitely, uh, I honestly, which people will probably get mad about because everyone's so into those other ones. Um, I was kind of like, I was like, I think these ones might be better than those other two. Uh, I think Youth of the Beast has some some fun stuff in it. So I was like, that's pretty cool. And for Fighting Elegy, I'm kind of on board with you for some of this stuff. Uh, I, I like the fighting. I think this character's uh, like onslaught of fighting people is more believable than in youth of the beast where he's just like, I'm going to go fight everyone. And you're like, all right. Um, what was I going to say? Um, this one's got real animal violence, but so that's not cool. They kill that snake and I don't like snakes, but you know, it's like okay. Friday. It's almost like Friday the 13th. Yeah. Well, it's, he smacks it you know? with, with his weird, uh, his uh, sponge mace. razor. Yeah. <laughs> Which that thing's like flying into people's like faces and shit, which is mm-hmm. like pretty pretty rancid. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know about these uh, these shows. Um, uh, Use the beast. It's like I said, it's zany. I got some I got some enjoyment out of it. In fighting analogy, I got some enjoyment out of this too. I liked uh, like seeing people just being so tired from fighting, they're just like throwing their bodies around. So that was cool, also. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know about Suzuki as well. I think he's no. cool. I can I see why people simp for him. Uh, but uh, see, that's the other thing. This he's this guy's more of a simp than he is an incel. Or yeah, yeah. yeah. So I and I so I see I do see why uh, Criterion simps that are on board with this dude. I get it now, but uh, I'm not one of them. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, what what are you thinking about this emerging? Th- theme genre subgenre in the criterion collection of the disaffected youth as far as like because it comes up often in movies and criterion's yeah. got a pretty good uh good chunk of uh these types of movies like from like say 400 blows mm-hmm. um i'm trying to remember the name of that really that one i liked a lot uh il posto oh yeah el posto is good what about jubilee <laughs> Does that fit in the disaffected you? Uh, that 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 fits into the no pile. Oh, oh. right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's. Uh, I think that's one of those things, though. That right. Like that's that old. <laughs> it's just like old dudes are always just like you know the kids these days. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah, kids these days do suck, and it's I bad. feel. But it's like, am I just saying the exact same thing people said twenty years ago, or did they? Uh, did boomers? Like ruin things for everyone, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. the disaffected youth classic Dog Star Man. Oh, man, t- talk about coming of age. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Everyone's always like, you know, Lady Bird or other coming of age stories, but it's like, give me Dog Star Man. That's what I'm talking about. Or, or the pinnacle of uh, growing into manhood, I Vitellioni. <laughs> Hey, Vitaleone, I am 45, <laughs> but I am only 13. Wow, 20. 2013. No. <laughs> yeah, remember how they got those 40-year-olds playing 20? What about uh, George, George Washington? Oh, God. One time a dog raped me, <laughs> and so I kill every dog I see now. And then you go, what? And, and now I direct Halloween movies. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so sick of fucking David Michael or David Gordon, Gordon Green yeah. and like his thing where because what are they getting him to revamp now? The Exorcist? Hellraiser. Hellraiser, actually, the Exorcist. It. He I mean, 
the, his Halloween was barely successful. Like who's throwing this guy back into revamping all of these franchises? I don't, I don't know. I don't I don't, well, well, but it's like, yeah, less David Gordon green, more Suzuki. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to think anymore. As I always say, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, I just want to point out that David Gordon Green's uh, Halloween made $255 million on a 10 or $15 million budget. So Yeah, that's pretty mildly successful. <laughs> mildly. <laughs> okay. Co- yeah, that's, that's why he's now this guy guy. yeah yeah okay well all the wrong reasons successful is not the right not the right thing to that but uh when you watch that though that film i'd be i'm more than excited to hear about what you have to say about uh, that new halloween uh stay inside your house i'm a doctor and then you go (laughs) and a podcaster we're podcasters tell us your name and you go what you want, you want to hear about uh, who hates these movies? Oh, yeah. That's a thing we do for this film. Or this, yeah. Youth of the Beast. Okay. We got Niels Mathis. Oh, yeah. Two stars. An early Suzuki that show signs of a budding director. Budding. The film budding. is a little more than a typical Yakuza tale, but a more outspoken set design, decent use of color, and the presence of Joe Shishido give the film some extra flair. It's not a bad effort, but a little too basic to be engaging, especially when comparing it wow. to Suzuki's later films. Yeah, because he does like we will there's like a guys like a trilogy of Suzuki movies coming up. Like soon? uh in the next probably year or two yeah yeah it's hey, like uh they got like like story of a prostitute He's okay the god there's a few of these things there's the one called the taisho trilogy and i don't know if that's not it that's a different set uh okay that's from arrow say so arrow's mm. got that covered but no there's like a, a few movies gates of flesh got got good titles Hmm. Those are good titles. That's one thing. That's one thing you can't take away from this guy. Pretty, pretty good titles. Tokyo Drifter, yeah. Brandy to Kill. Yep, pretty they are tough. good titles. Uh, so this person, this Niels, who I think is maybe South African, uh, based on uh, some of the language I'm seeing here, uh, yeah. they're they're a total weeb. This person, lots of anime. They have a uh, Grave of the Firefly, uh, fireflies in their favorite films. Uh, and then it says, looking for a rare gem? Check out my all-time favorites. Jared, here's some rare gems for you. Some of these actually I don't know. But, uh, you know, Grave of the Fireflies, Pie by Darren Aronofsky, uh, Ghost in the Shell, that's a rare gem. Uh, Hardcore Henry, My Neighbor Totoro, that's, that's a pretty rare gem. You know what I forgot to mention? What? So in our for our news, RJ... Yeah. I forgot to mention about Aronofsky's new movie. Oh man, that sounds so good. <laughs> Br- Brendan Fraser, who's working his way up to be a 600 pound man. Oh man, it sounds great. I, I really look forward to it. Oh god damn, that looks good. Uh, so Niels will be on board because he's got a ton of Aronofsky films in their favorites. You know what's weird though? This person's half star films include things like A Fistful of Dollars and My Darling Clementine. And out of Africa? Well, I mean, fist, fistful of dollars is a Yojimbo job. That's true. Yeah. What about uh, out of Africa? I know you're a big out of Africa uh, guy. Nope. What about the vanishing, Spurlos version? Half a star? What? That's what about wild. the last temptation of Christ? Half a star? Wow. Okay. Crazy. Yeah. Yep. Can you give this two? Um, yeah. And then we got James Vincent with two stars. Sure we do. One of the antagonists spends several scenes patting a fluffy cat. This isn't a movie asking to be taken seriously, and the ridiculous things about Youth of the Beast are precisely what gives it colorful bursts of fun. I had trouble engaging with Suzuki's film for a couple of reasons. The screenplay and editing are both problematic for me. 
The editing in particular frequently cuts from the noisy action packed scenes to a quiet and reserved one and concert and conversations regularly feel cut short. This is a very good looking movie, but far from Suzuki's, from Suzuki's most stylish on pretty much all fronts. Youth of the Beast is a film, which for me feels lacking aside from its aesthetics. Seems fair to me. I don't know, man. This person gave George Washington five stars. Oh, dear. They also gave Drive five stars. Oh, dear. So, I mean, you want to talk about aesthetics. Let's talk about fucking aesthetics. I don't know. It's a... This person's about what you'd think for liked movies, but they gave Billy Madison a one star, which I don't think is fair. Uh, On to Fighting Elegy. Mm -hmm. Two stars from Lance (laughs) Grabmiller. This one is a bit silly and doesn't have quite enough of the visual pizzazz I want from a Suzuki film. Um, what kind of pizzazz do they want? Let's we'll, we'll see. Let's take a look. Well, their favorite films are Eight and a Half, Weekend, Brazil, and Wings of Desire. Oh, boy. They only have two five-star films, Eight and a Half and Stalker. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, half-star films, Forbidden World the fuck uh, i don't know what those other ones are one hmm. star films uh the shooting with jack nicholson uh the gore gore girls <laughs> the monster club uh phantom paradise i don't know hmm. this, per- uh, this person well they got a lot of movies logged i don't know okay what their deal is finally kyle p smith two stars yeah. really struggled with this one Suzuki's disinterest and coherence only works when his style can make up for it. Aside from a fun opening and a pair of decent brawls, this satire, I put it in quotes because I don't think I'm of the era or nationality to understand it, Mm. bored me to the bone. That's fair. No, I think. I mean, (laughs) it is like, that's the one thing. These movies are very slapstickish. Yeah, they're zany. Yeah. Zany. Uh, Kyle P. Smith gave um, uh, This is 40 half a star. So I'm kind of on board with that. They gave Ghost Dad one star, Jared. Yeah, pro- that's pretty generous, I would guess. Hey, that's a Sydney Poitier film, my man. Mm-hmm. My man. But they gave, I don't know, it's five stars to speed. That just seems ironic, right? Is anyone giving five stars to speed? Like, honestly, I don't think so. I wouldn't, but whatever. I'm looking at their other, I don't know. There's nothing interesting here. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. So we're four deep in Suzuki and uh, we'll, we'll meet him again down the creeps road. Mm-hmm. Any final thoughts on these movies, RJ? No fine they're zany like the animaniacs um after the break rj and i get sucked into some weird fascist kind of cult thing and uh go to commit a coup in a capital you you better be careful friend oh no (laughs) you better be real careful i mean it is kind of an odd coincidence that we're watching this movie (laughs) right now it always is isn't it always though? Mm-hmm. It could have it could have been two weeks ago and been like, eh. But yeah, I noticed, but it, it it didn't change much of my <laughs> viewing. I guess. I, I mean, there's not enough people getting just beating the shit out of around me for this to really uh, resound. But I mean, RJ's got the Catholic thing going on over there. I got I got something going on. I'll yeah. tell you about it, but not tonight. So, um, yeah, I, I guess to after after the break, mm-hmm. uh, you'll have to wait till the second movie comes out. Which second movie? The one that never gets made. The remake? The second half of the novel. <laughs> 